And secondly, after the earthquake, we had more than 1.5 million people living under yeah. the tents. How many are left? About 300,000. Yeah, still it's, it's still a lot, but uh, it's not. But considerable achievement because first, first months everybody was talking the stories of the disaster, of people living, and now the story stopped. So that means that yes, it's normal. We are seeing progress. We are seeing progress. Uh, it will take a long, a long time, but. Rebuilding homes, it's costly. You know, even taking the people out of the tent is costly. Because we don't just keep them out. We identify a home for them, we pay the rent for them for one year. Or we habilitate uh, homes who have been damaged by the earthquake. So it's time consuming, it's very costly. Uh, so it's not easy. But with some specific programs like free education now that I came in with, free transportation to, uh, to school for these kids. You know, with such programs and buildings of homes, uh, the, the population is very confident. I have about 72, 73 per, uh, approval also. I know. And you know, after two years, you know, uh, Goga, he's he was he's the most popular performer, also one of the most popular performers in my You're country. Kidding me. <laughs> and but he still couldn't make it to the president. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Then we are and very active, <laughs> We should probably have a show together because yeah. <laughs> you said the very, very important clip because he is like all the Georgian teenagers are crazy about him, <laughs> but their vote is not enough to get elected to president <laughs> yet. I mentioned the show because that was on December. On December, I was invited by Julio Iglesias. I, Julio Iglesias was singing in our city of Batumi. You know, that's the city of Batumi where he sang on New Year's time uh, and. Uh, uh, and we're actually with good friends with him. Yeah, he sang here. And uh, that's our coastal city. And that's where he was singing, not far from here. Uh, open air and New Year's concert. Now you're showing me your country in the book. Uh, you should come and see it in life. Until I come and, and Absolutely. visit, right? I, I, we are invited here. It's a tourist guide to Lurie. <laughs> uh, you know, this is the, I want to show you how we rebuilt, you know, after war with Russia. We had, uh, overall, we had hundreds of thousands of uh, internally displaced persons. Uh, and here we built tens of thousands of houses in two months time. With water? In two months? Two months time. Uh, we built uh, basically the first 10,000 in two months time, which here, yeah, I see, that's, that's the houses we built for them. Uh, it was with, uh, with um, electricity, gas, running water, uh, that's the school, it took a little bit more, uh, the school here, and uh, so this, this took more time. But this first one was because we needed desperately to face the war in two months. And the war, because it was the war in the month of August, and so they had been expulsed in the month of August, and it was important to achieve this before the month of November. Uh, it's incredible. Eh? Uh, the, the company who built it is uh, a Georgian. Georgian company. Georgian. Yeah. Yeah. Donc, uh, it was our Minister of Interior then who was in charge because we had to put someone who would manage it. But anyway, this is our apartment where this is. But, uh, uh, <laughs> it's an ambitious but, country. You know, we were one of the most hopeless, corrupt, and uh, destitute places worldwide. And uh, we now we are, uh, we became the least corrupt country in Europe. We are the least criminalized country in Europe. We were one of the most criminalized. Even today, organized crime bosses all over Russia, even Spain are Georgian. Um, and we were now number 139 on World Bank list of doing business environment, and we are number nine now, uh, which is first time ever developing country and the top, top 10. Poverty was 52% in Georgia, it went down to, uh, to um, 17, 18% according to UNDP. Uh, so this was all reforms we did in seven, eight years' time. And uh, I mean, the, the, but I understand what is to come from hopeless background situation because we were really, I mean, crazy in the uh, infrastructure. We built 8,000 kilometers of road, but we had no roads when we almost came in. So it was like a disaster. No running water in 80% of places. So now it's 70% it's more or less already has it. You know, I understand what it takes to um, to come from hopeless situation to some hope and then to results. And I think you are just at a very good, cool, promising beginning. Right? Yes, but uh, you you were able to do some miracles. Miracles. Just building these homes in two months, getting so many points as far as uh, doing business, 
uh, we, 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 ha we have a huge problem which is corruption and it's not just uh, in the system it's the it's in the but that's this we had exactly the same point we had to fire the entire traffic police for that and uh, we uh, no basically entire police traffic and criminal police and for three four months we had no police in the country we had recruited what? young people mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and uh, gave them new cars, new radios, uniforms, uh, guns, uh, and trained them, gave them initial training of two months in the academy, but they were retrained continuously. And that really killed, uh, crime rate went down for actually uh, something like 80% uh, in two years' time. And uh, because we, re but we were very radical, and then we had zero tolerance on crime, we had zero tolerance on uh, corruption, we had zero tolerance on many other things, tax, tax evasion, tax collection, we decreased taxes by 60% and the tax collection went up 13 times uh, within the next three, four years. Uh, so the economy get, got legalized. But the, exactly the same problem, we had the mentality of corruption and still I think mentality is corruption is not gone. It takes generations. It's, yeah. it's, uh, so we had to introduce strong state to do it. But then, of course, people don't always like Sork State, so it's uh, it's a big, still ongoing jury still out and takes uh, and lots of time to change it. Sounds so interesting that I'm... Um, you should come and see it. Should, no, I, I don't just want to see it. I'd like to invite a, a commission to come and we'd love learn, to. learn from you. We would love to invite you. Now, we have, actually, we have new government now, which but we have cooperation between me and that government, and we're more than happy. You see, for instance, we have all this... How is the justice system? This is the American Technology University, but um, uh, uh, we have the system as um, this kind of system. I'll show you. Yeah, here it is. Um, so uh, this is common space for every bureaucratic procedure. What it means is that you can. We have world's fastest customs procedure, world's fastest property registration, world's fastest uh, company registration, world's fastest issue ID issuance. And the way it works is that you go there, it, the people pay fines there, they pay taxes, they even get school certificates, they get their passports, passport taking, passport taking, should in seven minutes. And uh, so, and uh, this is the, this one is like uh, in the capital, so it serves 20,000 people a day, which is to say uh, it's a big supermarket for government services. Now, but these are rural areas, you know, this is a, this is a coastal town, but this is in rural areas, uh, the, same, the same public service halls, you know. That's, uh, these are police bingles, but this is pu public service halls in different places like this. For instance, this is in a place where I have my vineyard, and it's a very small place. It's, I think, altogether population is 12,000 people, but they have something like that there as well. So people would not travel long ways because, you know, they have to do through property transactions, customs transactions. Uh, you know, next time you come, I should invite you to my vineyard here. You don't have prime minister. Uh, we have prime minister. Oh, you have prime minister. Yes, uh, prime minister from another party. But uh, it's nominated by the, the, no, the, 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 the parliament also. All right. I want to invite you. And the other thing I want to suggest to you is to, uh, you know, the one more request we have that we have this resolution IDP at the UN, and uh, you know, uh, which is basically giving the right to return back to their houses. And Haiti was abstaining last year, said so we would just request to vote for it because it's something that is purely humanitarian. Maybe that's one of the requests I would have. And we have an increasing trend of the supporter countries. Uh, last four European years. Union totally <coughs> votes for it, of course the United States, a uh, number of uh, Central American countries, and we just need now... Is it the gens who are there who want to come to them? It's the same thing with the Union Soviet. Yes, they want to come to Georgia. No, 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 they are already there, but it's the resolution on the right to return to their domicile, which is now... It's in the region of Georgia. It's in the region of Georgia, but it's occupied by the Russian. It's occupied by the Russian. We can't go and enter these houses. It's the region, because the 20th century, we have constructed these people who have been excluded comme le résultat des guerres de leur domicile. Donc, c'est le droit des retours qui est droit universellement reconnu, mais chaque année, on fait ça à l'Assemblée Générale pour justement pour le soutien moral. C'est ça, change, ça change beaucoup, pas beaucoup. De cette idée du Sud et de la Présie, de deux régions. Mais quand même, c'est l'autre, c'est une autre question, mais de toute façon, je voudrais vous inviter. Euh, de vous euh, 
euh, je serai très heureuse de vous. Ben, je suis présidente de, jusqu'au le mois de novembre euh, parce que j'ai perdu le droit pour le troisième mandat. J'essaie de, j'ai, j'ai déjà le deuxième mandat. Donc, mais si vous avez le temps de nous visiter avant de ça, c'est ça. Vous avez encore le mois prochain. Ah oui, non, en prochain, c'est l'année dernière. Mais vous allez encore aller aux élections, non Non, non, parce que c'est la constitution, c'est le c'est mandat. Ah, d'accord. Donc, non, d'accord. C'est pour aller voir Haïti pour bosser autrement. Après ça. Avant novembre. Non, non on, on va y aller avant novembre d'une part. Ouais. Et d'autre part, pour la résolution, ça parce que c'est... C'est, c'est, euh, c'est la résolution, c'est... C'est c'est c'est, 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 ah, la Haïti a besoin d'abstention, peut-être qu'ils n'ont pas eu d'abstention. Oui, c'est vrai, c'est vrai. Si, non, si non, ils n'ont pas d'abstention, ça, 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 ça arrive. Quand même. Donc, Donc là, vous, vu la posture que vous nous avez touchée aussi, vous avez initié cette rencontre, on est très, on est très flatté. On vous, vous remercie. Merci à vous. Et... Merci à vous. Je suis très heureuse de vous voir, enfin, parce que vous êtes un homme légendaire. Pour...